Yes, welcome back to our interview segment. As always, we sit down with different people in our interview, but today's going to be a special one. I'm so happy. You can't imagine my happiness today. So today, as I'm, I'm sitting down with an, Ameri with an Angolan model. She was named Forbes uh, Magazine's top model of 2013. And uh, in 2017, Maria was the first African woman to feature on the cover of American version of LA. After 20 years, she was a Victoria's Secret model from 2013 to 2017. She has appeared in many, many campaigns from Givenchy, Tommy Hilfiger, and uh, Forever 21, and many more. We're going to be sitting down with her, getting to know more about her journey, and uh, she's in Rwanda. As you saw, I think, days ago, you saw her uh, hosting the one of the biggest, biggest music, music awards in Rwanda, The Trace. So go on anywhere, stay with me. We'll be right back. Uh, welcome back. I'm sitting with the beautiful, the amazing Nahia Borges. I want to take you back yeah. to everything when it started, because for as we know you, 2013, yeah. the Victoria's Secret model, who I think was the first one to rock the runway with her natural hair, that's such an amazing thing. But I would love to know, how did everything start? Let's yeah. go back. Let me take you back to the the young Maria Borges. How did everything start? I was in the high school, studied to be a nurse, a mm. doctor, mm. anything related to the medicine, because mm. I lost my mom at a very early age. I was 11. Mm. You know, as a kid, you, you feel like you want to do something. In my end, it was like to save life. I'm like, I want to save life. How do you save life? Become a doctor, support people not to die. But at the end of the day, we're all going to leave this world. This is why we all have to mention to make sure we leave something mm. so the people can remember our best self mm. and the earth. Um, at the end of the day, modeling came along. Mm. I was part of the first elite model competition in Angola. I didn't win because God has a plan. Mm. God, God has a big plan for me. Mm. And I, I signed with the, one of the best um, agency at the time, local agency. The name was Step. Which I'm so grateful for the all the opportunity they gave me from the beginning, mm -hmm. and the contest was something that escalated my visibility in the country. People love it, and I feel that I belong to this industry, which is fashion, is business. Mm -hmm. So from there, I got opportunity to go to Portugal, my first trip. Mm -hmm. I thought I would never stand on the plane because I'm so tall, like Lua. <laughs> One day, so I'm so tall. I'm like, I'm not gonna stand on the plane. I was so scared. Mm. So I went to Portugal. I did super well. I signed with the agency in Portugal. Then I moved to New York in 2013. Mm. And uh, my first season, I walked 70 shows. That, that is when. 70 shows? 17. Mm. This is when Forbes Africa nominated me as a supermodel. And mm. the rest of history. Yes. Uh, mm. I became a L'Oreal ambassador, global mm. ambassador. Givenchy was the first brand who put me on the spotlight. Mm. I was exclusive for Givenchy. Thanks to Ricardo Tisci, mm. which was also the, 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 the designer for Burberry. Mm. So mm. Um, then I meet my father in fashion, Edward mm. Inufu. Mm. I meet the top model that I love now, Campbell, Giselle. Mm. I mean, the rest of history. Yes, yes. <laughs> you have just said like a little bit about your background. But I want to know, as a person with this industry, you are the first, I think, black woman to walk the Victoria's Secret with your natural hair. I think, uh, what does it mean to you to be a trailblazer? You know, to remove all the boundaries, to be the first one to walk that walk. You know, the Victoria's Secret was one of the glamorous, biggest fashion shows, but you came in from Africa, a girl from Angola, you know, go on that uh, red cap, on that runway with your natural hair. You know, tell me about being that iconic, that moment of your life. It was a blessing moment because at the end of the day, I moved out of my comfort zone, out of my country, my continent, mm. you know, go to America. At the end of the day, when you got invited, you invited. Mm. You're not home. Mm. I have to make sure I stand up for my culture mm. and always rem remember that where I come from. And when the Victoria's Secret gave me the opportunity to showcase my natural hair, mm. they understood that, hey, you stand up for something bigger, mm. for the girl, for the women, for your continent. Mm. And embracing yourself, that was the title. Because mm. 
being a Victoria's Secret woman, you have to bring that confidence, mm. which is lingerie. Mm. You have not to be shy, mm. not to be afraid of who you are or where you come from. Mm. When they gave me the platform, I said it, it's over. Mm. Africa in the map and that's it. Mm. And guess what I did that? Mm. If you remember, it was in Paris, yes. which is the one of, of largest, largest Africa community outside Africa, oh, Paris. Wow. Mm. So that was a history and mm. it made. Since yeah. then, Everything we was, keep we yeah. keep doing history. Yes. <laughs> uh, from all of that, I think I want to, to know what have you learned from your journey as a model? Because we will also talk about something. You are not just a model. You have grown to become a businesswoman. You have yes. grown to become an ambassador. You are more than a model. I, but I want to know from your journey, from the time you started mm -hmm. to now, you have you're on the cover of LA. You're on the cover of uh, Vogue. Many different covers. But I want to know. What have you learned so far from your journey as a model? I have learned that life is a blessing mm -hmm. and the opportunity is there for us to embrace mm -hmm. and give back always. Mm -hmm. Because uh, even though I'm all of that, I always worry about my background. Mm -hmm. I have, I grew up on a very hard childhood. Mm -hmm. Like I have seen many stories with superstar, people that is uh, that icon now, they, they didn't come from easy background, mm. a lot of them. And um, my background, it was hard because, you know, I was growing up with no mom, we call orphan, little mm. life. But my mm. father is alive, thank God. Mm. But he was not present mm. as I was growing up. But we still embrace him, you know, at the end of the day, we have to forgive people. Mm. And he learned that at the end of the day, he learned for the best. Now he try everything to be next to us, mm. um, which we, we love that. Mm. But um, what I learned the most is just the appreciation of being this person who I am and never forget that this is bigger than I think, bigger than my dreams. Because even though, just to give you an idea, I have to change from finish uh, college, finish the university, or try five years modeling. Mm. My family, they told I was crazy because you mm. know, education is key, but you can still educate yourself mm. without going to the, without, without going to the specific place they call school or they call university, even at home. Mm. You, education is a, a way to find uh, a better um, uh, skills to get educated. You can still be home, and get your education. You can still travel and get your, get your education. education. I get my education talking to people, having my mentors. Mm -hmm. And um, by, the age of the, by the age of 23, I got my L'Oreal contract, which is the, the my most paid contract in yeah, <laughs> and, and the modern industry. It's the highest. Mm -hmm. So, which my contract covers everything, hair, mm -hmm. skincare, and makeup. Then I was able to be at Forbes magazine front cover as mm. self-made, made, self, self, self self -made. named, no, self-made, self-made, yes. self thank yes. you, mm. as a self-made in my country. That mm. was a blessing. Mm. As, as we say in Portuguese, junto mm. somos mais fortes, which means in English, together we're stronger, which mm. means I was not alone. Mm. I never be alone on this modern career. I always have your support, mm. African support, mm. diaspora support, everyone. Mm. This is this is how you guys mm. build or help me to build Maria Bosch. Uh, at the Trace Awards, you came here in Rwanda to host the Trace Awards with Devanji. Yeah. Devanji called you the pride of Africa. You know, because we were proud, we, we are so proud to see someone like you, someone who looked like us up there on the top, uh, on the Forbes cover, working the Victoria's Secret runway, working all these big runs. And when you take a look at the journey in the fashion industry, let's talk about this to go to Africa. Yes. Yeah, we have, I think there was a discover, I think with Vogue, British Vogue, where we had black supermodels. Yes. We had, we now, I think in Rwanda, we have like five Rwandan models that are working Paris, Milan, all those shows. What do you think about our development? in the fashion industry, Africa, because uh, you have seen it, you have worked in, in it, you have seen from the zero to where we are right now. What do you think about our fashion industry? Let me give it up to my big brother, mm. Bunch, mm. because if he called me a proud, pride Africa, mm. 
I would say that uh, sometimes we're too humble. At the end of the day, he was the person who opened the door for many. Mm. I would call someone beautiful because I know that I'm beautiful too. Mm. If he called me pride, the pride of Africa, pride of Africa mm. is because he, the bunch itself, mm. he's someone that makes all of us so proud. Mm. And this is when you recognize, when you're in a position to recognize mm. other, that means you got it. Mm. And you see the other person in the same part. Mm. I love him so much. It was mm. a pleasure to horse mm. the first ever Trace Award here in Kigali. Mm. The first ever mm. in Africa. Mm. And we both didn't have much experience, but we got ourselves. We're strong as Africa. And together, we are strong. We're stronger. Mm, stronger, Exactly. Yes. Talk about fashion industry. Congratulations, mm. because I, I think I saw one or two run that is beautiful, tall. But now that you told me that it's more, there's mm. a four mm. everywhere, that means a blessing. That means my work is, what I do is like actually is getting somewhere. Because mm. if you will have more uh, African models bre breaking through, Mm. and have the opportunity and showcase how beautiful, elegant we are. Mm. Not only because we have a lot of supermodels from Sudan, mm. a lot of gorgeous models from Sudan, Nigeria, mm. Angola as well coming up, but having from Rwanda, that's amazing because that means like whoever is paving the way, they're doing right. I think you have traveled. I saw you at the Tress hosting the Tress Awards. You are wearing some of the Rwandan pieces, what we call umushanana, is our culture piece, our culture clothing. You know, what What really made you do that? Because I think you had so many outfits you changed on there because you came out there like looking beautiful. You had so many outfits that you are rocking, but you chose umushanana, our Rwandan heritage, our Rwandan culture outfit. Why exactly? Why did you choose to portray uh, to portray Rwanda like that? Because I think that's a, that was a big platform you uh, yes. you were having trace first ever trace will be yeah. this is going to be going down in history. Yeah. So I think why was that important for you? It's easy. The end of the day, don't forget, I was the first model to hawk Africa designer at Victoria's Secret Pink Carpet in oh. Shanghai. Mm. And it was all over. Her name was Polaki, a beautiful, mm. uh, I would say, inspiring uh, designer from Nigeria. Mm. So when I made that statement, I understood that everywhere I have a chance to showcase mm. my culture, showcase the hard work, showcase the amazing stylists that we have as Africa, I'll do so. But everywhere I go, not only Angola, because when I go to Angola, my country, mm. I made sure I support the local designers, mm. I support the fashion industry, I support the business industry and the talents, and upcoming mm. talents. Mm. So I would say Angola, Rwanda, Ghana, everywhere I go, I belong, I feel home. Mm. So it was important, it was important that I made sure my team, we put first strategy, we have to find one of the best uh, start designers or the best brands in Rwanda. Mm. This is where we come along because mm. people need to know who I stand for. Mm. We, I stand for to showcase the mm. best brand. I stand for, for the uh, fashion industry. Mm. So it was right to look for one of the Rwandans designing showcase and open the Trace Award. Mm. Well represented. You even though, yes. even though mm. I twist some people, people are like, are you are you run this? <laughs> but no, this is how you mm. feel when you wear a powerful, mm. traditional mm. Uh, designer from Rwanda. Yeah. It's outstanding. Yes. It's like a welcome. But you see the style. Mm. But who dressed you today? Who dressed you today? Today. Mm. I went back to Pamela Roland, mm. which is one of the gowns I was wearing during mm. um, the Trace Award. Mm. She's one of the designers that support me since I started my career in mm. New York. Mm. So in my interview with Trace, I did make sure I will bring inclusions because mm. Africa, we also, we, we vote for diversity. Mm. Social New York and other countries that vote for diversity. Mm. And I had to bring some of the brands that support me over the years. Mm. And I choose 
Pamela Roland yes. from New York. Yes, you did history as you just said, but I want to know, you're also an ambassador. Let's go to that side. Not only yeah. being a model, you're also an ambassador from, I think, tourism in, in Angola, you're also an African ambassador. Why was that important for you to not stay in the lane of modeling? Because I think you you, was, you were fine before, yeah. you know, but you <laughs> chose to be like, okay, let me be a businesswoman. Let me do something, give back to my yeah. community. You became a, a tourist ambassador in Angola. You are having your businesses, as I said, you are helping artists. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to know why was that necessary for you? Why, why was that important for you to be like, okay, I'm not going to be a model for the rest of my life. Let me do something else. In fact, I'm a mom. Yes, definitely also a mom. <laughs> things things are getting very tight. Mm. Between business, uh, I would say it's in my blood. Mm. It's in our, in our blood as Africa as a whole, mm. as a all, because I know we don't, we don't relax. We mm. we work so much because it's coming from from our blood. I would say I'll give it up 100 percent to my mom. He she raised us as as, mm. as a single mom, mm. and everything that she teaches us, you gotta work to be organized in life. And part of the business, mm. uh, I would say, is important because. Mm. Unfortunately, in my country, mm. model is not a career. Mm. It's like a hobby. Mm. What can I do? Because this is my career, mm. and I, I make a living mm. on modeling. Maybe in my country, only a few designers making a living mm. about uh, of of um, selling clothing and making mm. sewing uh, uh, their best uh, mm. collection. Mm. But Africa, we have a huge. Um, commercial um, I would say the commercial zone is where it's loud mm. we sell a lot of stuff commercial wise this is what Africa stands for but it's missing a little bit of, of uh, mm. uh, marketing mm. this is where we come in now now be more strong in marketing mm. because um, we have a very commercial um, um, Every day we think about selling something mm. and business why and it's important not to always stuck only in the modern industry and not knowing about the business. Mm. At the end of the day, a lot of young girls they think model is just about glamour, I have to be pretty. But no, modeling is business. Mm. This is why even this is my fight now in Angola, mm. starting in Angola, mm. because they think modeling is entertainment. Mm. But I told them now modeling is is a um, business. Mm because there's nothing that you can entertain. It's art in business. Mm. Concluding this conversation, uh, after the Trace Awards, you uh, had a pleasure of like meeting the president of Rwanda, Pohadane. Mm -hmm. How was it that experience? You know, she asked about uh, the advice that you got from meeting the president. How was it like the experience of meeting him? I would say it was brilliant. It was such an honor to meet mm. Mr. President because mm. We all felt like, Dad, are you here? Mm. We all trying to hug him. Mm. We took a picture. We sing. We sing Je Jerusalem. Mm. And uh, for me, President has showing that what we need is to support the new generation, mm. to give opportunity for the good, bringing Trace Award, which is stand for the every. Uh, I would say stand for. For diversity. Mm, Afro, Afro and excellency. Afro excellency. Thank you yes. so much for complimenting. And people from diaspora. Mm. That this is what we need. Mm. Celebration. Yeah. Even though we're facing the, the world is facing is facing such a hard time. Mm. And we know what the past of difficulty that Rwanda had mm. as a as a country. Mm. Uh, it's always to remind ourselves to stick together, support one another, mm. you know. Our brothers and sisters mm. starting in Africa, they need our help. Mm. So Mr. President, he was clear that this is home for you. Mm. Don't stay in the street, come, mm. stay. That's why I brought my luggage, I'm staying. <laughs> Definitely, you have I'm, to. I'll go for work, I'll go see my daughter mm. and I'll come back. Definitely. <laughs>